and welcome back guys this is your Maya Sensei speaking we're gonna talk about the extrude tool and cover up all the basics that we need to know about this tool and how it works and where we can you know manipulate this tool to our um, you know to whatever we're making at that particular point so the first thing we need to do is obviously have access to that so we're gonna make sure we are in the modeling menu set and you will find the extrude tool under the edit mesh window right there You'll see the shortcut control E and then we have some extra options in there if we need to set up an initial set of settings that we would like to reuse over and over and over. We do have access to these settings after the fact so you don't have to change these things right here you can go and do that um, during the process of ex actually extruding something. So let's quickly have a look. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I go to my component mode and then I select the type of component that I would like to extrude. Yes the extrude tool does work on vertices, edges and faces but we, for the most part you'll probably apply the extrude tool mostly on faces and then secondarily on on edges so let's quickly have a look I'm gonna grab this this um, polygon face I'm gonna shift right click and hit extrude also same control E or menu up here at the top you can go extrude over there and then the the fourth method is going to be utilizing the actual uh, your, your, your tabs over here and you'll see there's the extrude button right so once you hit the extrude button you will notice that your surface itself has um, you know, little dots on the side that is if you have the option enabled for that I've already covered this in one of my other videos just look that up um, talking about the settings for um, whole face versus center face selected um, and there I cover all the basics of, of making sure your meshes are clean and so on. So further on from here you'll see the extrude tool actually appears to have a multiple manipulator. So it's got basically your, your, your translate tool, it's got your scale tool and then the circle on the outside is your rotate tool. So if we click on the actual arrows you'll see it pulls up or it moves across in whichever axes. You also have the option of using the cubes to scale it in either non-uniformly or uniformly using this outer cube over there and that maintains the proportion of that inwards. The same functionality technically applies using this, this floating window that pops up. So I'm going to undo just before we did that um, you know, moving upwards. We can use this thickness which allows us to, to increase that height. The local translate Z does basically the same thing. It's just two different ways of doing it. So if you pull it up here, you'll see the translate Z goes up, whereas the thickness might be more of a, like a specific value in centimeters instead of an arbitrary value. So that's very useful. The, the next thing is offset. The offset basically, sorry about that, it's very sensitive. So by holding down control, you have more control over the, the offset um, incremental values. So looking at that, we can then kind of create a little frame before we do some Something else like hitting another extrude and then pulling up from there so it's not extruding directly from the outer edge so that's very useful I'm gonna hit ctrl E once again use again a little bit of an offset and then ctrl E to push that down so a very quick very easy way of adding offset details and it just keeps adding to it every time you hit the extrude button so from here at any given point we can then go for that particular extrude you will see that there is a divisions section in there which allows us to add more divisions within that um, you know extrude that we push down and then from there we could go and use the offset to kind of pull that in to kind of create some sort of a you know offset effects we can maybe pull that up instead and you'll see it maintains that division split across that particular extrude whether it's all evenly split so from here you'll see that there is an option that is called keep faces together I'm going to show you guys on a different area I'm going to go and hold down tab click and drag over a selection of faces and then hit ctrl E for extrude and you will see now it basically creates the border of the extrude on the outside so that they all follow along for the ride. It seems like I had that face selected there previously. Let me quickly go deselect that and then hit the extrude button once again. So now you'll see it works as one unit. When we use the offset, it kind of offsets as one 
you know, full extrude. But then we have this keep faces together. As soon as I switch that off, you will see that the extrude is now applied to each individual face and just allows you to then control, you know, the scaling and the adjustments as if these are separate shapes. So that's a very, very nice technique. Then finally, the taper will only work if you actually use it with a curve extrude. So I'm going to show you guys again how that works. First thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead, create a curve. Uh, let's use an EP curve for now. The options, I'm going to make sure the settings are reset. So it should be three cubic. And then from here, I'm going to hold down V for vertex snap. I'm going to click on that center dot. And then we can go ahead, let's say in one of our side views, we can co quickly go and draw out a basic curve you know, shape from there. I'm going to hit enter to close the curve. I'm going to jump back to my perspective view and we can quickly see what's happening here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select that face um, in component mode and then I'm going to shift select the curve that is currently in, in object mode. And to do that, you've got to make sure that only the selected object is in component mode so that it maintains the object state but yet that particular object is in component mode. So now if I do that, you'll see that this curve is selectable. I'm going to hit extrude and you will see that the face that we had there that we had selected is now moved all the way to the end. And so we basically want to make sure that this guy follows the path and all the way around. The reason why it's doing this is just because of the divisions is only set to one. So it's going to take that face and move it all the way to the end of the curve. I'm going to increase the divisions and that will allow us to draw the shape all the way around and then it will maintain the profile as is. Finally, let's quickly have a look at what the taper does. If we click on taper, it will allow us to increase or decrease the profile so that it kind of creates a nice smooth you know, offset according to that. So this is a short list of attributes. You can always look for more attributes if you feel you want. Like for instance, twist is quite a nice feature, especially when you have something extruded along a curve. You can use that then to kind of twist the curve profile to kind of allow you to have more of an abstract extrude if that's what you wanted. So that's the basics for the extrude tool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.